This is the Hour of Awesome with Robert, Chris, and Steven. This isn't the Hour of Neat, Cool, or Rad. It is all going to be awesome. <laughs> Welcome to the Hour of Awesome, episode 12. Uh, my name is Robert Macy, and with me tonight is uh, Chris Cole. Hey, how's it going? And Stephen Humphrey. That would be me. Okay, we had some interesting technical difficulties, and then the dancing android kind of threw me off. <laughs> Although <laughs> something thrown me off, as we know. Okay, so uh, let's just go right into super happy fun time, because what we did this week, who, who the hell cares? Nobody cares. <laughs> Throw force. <laughs> Bro <laughs> force. <laughs> okay. Like so, force, do you? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, um, okay. We talk. Yeah. So, who cares if people don't care what we did? Um, <laughs> they're they're listening to the show, so they must give some kind of rat's ass to. It. Anyway, your mom um, wants to know. My mom wants to know about Bro Force. How is uh, Bro Force? Co-op platforming game, which does not work. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro, force people. It's just the game, or if it was the players, man. Well, there probably should have been a bit more communication between us. Well, that, and there was a certain member that decided another member sucked to the level that he had to snicker at him. I have no idea there, what you're referring to. Over again. <laughs> there was a certain member that did kind of suck, though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, the new business group would, would have been me. I can't play a platformer with crap. Well, you know, it would have been a little bit better if everyone had their own perspective because then there wouldn't be this issue of people getting trapped at the top or the bottom of the screen or put in a position where you can't see where your character is. Right. Um, until it's an alpha. It's, it's an alpha. Yeah. You know, who is me and who is you? And oh, yeah. Yeah. crazy. But we kept oh, changing yeah, who our characters were. Yeah. yeah. And then so. it wasn't really clear, even, you know, from the, the image icons on the corners, um, who my character was. I mean, I, I found out which one I was by pressing left, right, left, right to see which one moved that way. And if you do a left, right, um, left, right, up, down, select a B start, you'd get a free life or something. I don't know. Yeah, unfortunately, I did not. Because uh, I couldn't use them. Yeah. Uh, so th I think it's a game that requires a lot more communication. Um, if they're going to keep this sort of single perspective um, frame, if you will. Definitely a, a team playing this game has to have communication. Otherwise, you're screwed. And you also have to have... I, I'm sorry. I just don't think the arrow keys are a good thing for platformers. Back from our Skype difficulties and back to Bro Force. We'll probably have more Skype difficulties before the night's out. Lightning. That kind of a night. Yeah, it's that kind of night. So, yeah, Bro Force. Uh, single perspective, multiple players. Pain in the ass. <laughs> Though it is humorous in its awfulness. I mean, you do get to be Terminator, you get to be Indiana Jones, you get to be uh, Mr. T. Robocop. Um, Robocop. Yeah. Uh, Men in Black. Yeah. You know. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, yeah, the ninja. The ninja was ninja. kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> uh, lots of explosions. Yeah. Uh, we managed to kill each other pretty frequently. That's yeah, heads up, friendly fire. Yeah, yeah. Well, you couldn't kill each other by shooting each other. You could only kill each other by destroying the entire building around the person. Yes. Everyone cool. was sensitive to explosions. Yeah, I think any explosion would get you. Yeah. Well, not the dynamite thrower. You could still, the dynamite could be okay to blow up. It's just that something else blew up around you and fell on you. What you guys, I don't know who it was because I never had it. Someone had a special that occasionally would go off that would, like, blow up the world. <laughs> I don't know what you're referring to. I don't I know think, what you're referring to. I never used specials, except for, like, yeah. once or twice. I think That this one was... looked like you were throwing a turkey out of people. That was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think what? it was that you put it down, and there were certain things that, like, there was, like, dynamite in addition that you could do, or, like, whole tankers or something you could blow up. Um, yeah. Yeah, because every once in a while, like, it seemed like the entire screen would just explode. Oh, that was me. I was blowing up, like, several different things at one time with, like, the dynamite and stuff. That's why that happened. Yeah, uh, right. Yes, I, that was totally my fault. Yeah. yeah. yeah that was it, pretty cool. Me, it. I couldn't figure out where the hell to go. <laughs> yeah.
You guys were still in the place. I had gotten out and threw my bag in the getaway vehicle, and I was just mowing down these cops like mad, right? Which I figured, okay, I'll just keep them. I will slaughter them all, and then you guys will be able to get out. And then they bring in police snipers yeah. that just waste yes. us the moment we walked out on the street. And it's yeah. just like, come on. Yeah. Oh, stealth game. Boo. Boo on stealth game. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, or at least give us a real tank. You know, I mean, seriously, like, not like a tank like you drive, like a tank character that can take stupid amounts of damage and deliver stupid amounts of punishment. Because that was the, that's where that escalated to. Well, that's um, the point. You're supposed to avoid that. No, boo. Boo. If you want to blow everything up, that's an entirely different game. Oh, I want it to be like the last scene in Heat. Yes. <laughs> yes. But running yes. gun battles like, down the street. Right. Or, like, 40, awesome. 45 minute gunfight where people walk it's away totally it's unscathed. Like, uh, Battlefield Hardline? Yeah. Because then we can do that. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, I'm down with that because, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, boo. Boo on that game. That's that's what I have to say about Payday 2. Because um, RPGs should be used as sniper rifles. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, there's things that entertain me. Stealth weapon. And a good <laughs> no game. No one expects it to happen. A good game and a good movie should have at least two of the three following things. <laughs> oh, oh, here okay. we go. Swearing, <laughs> okay. explosions and violence, okay. and nudity. So you well, don't like a lot of video games then? We sweared a lot <laughs> during that well. game. There was not a lot of swearing though on the game end, at least that we saw or heard or saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there so weren't any explosions. We to bring these elements. For right. example, we shouldn't have had to get naked. <laughs> right. I shouldn't have had to do that in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hey, as uh, talking to my two-year-old says, nobody wants to wear pants. That's true. Yeah, that is true. I'll nobody really that. does. And so, I completely derailed the conversation. Yeah, you and <laughs> pantsless uh, Robert pantsless there. Yeah, those I, those who are uh, watching or uh, or just listening to the podcast, be aware that there are uh, no obvious pantsless people on the video so uh no okay. obvious okay that's yes. right it is Good not enough. obvious right yes. right all right it's time for super happy fun time okay. <laughs> <laughs> and i still have the abrupt ending <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, super happy fun time this week. Brought to you by Bruce Campbell. Is the big hit, uh, 1998 film, and this was recommended by Chris. So, tell us, Chris, why? Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't think I saw this movie in a theater when it came out. I don't know when I first saw this movie. It was probably some kind of rental or something. I'd never heard of it when I when I first saw it on the movie shelf or whatever. And I said, I can check this out. Why not? Right. And I was shocked at how good it was. I had never heard of it before. I was like, this is a good movie. It's kind of a fun kind of movie to watch. It's about a hitman who fear, fears personal rejection. And he even says in the movie, he can't stand the thought of someone not liking him. And of course, then another character says, well, you know, there's hundreds of people that you've killed have families that probably don't like you. <laughs> and so, but he never makes that connection, right? Well, anyway, he um, has two uh, love interests uh, and he has to basically supply both of them with money. And he's always in financial trouble to get himself out of the financial trouble, uh, he decides to get involved in a kidnapping operation, and it turns out that the person that they kidnap is the goddaughter of their crime boss, which is a bad choice. Yep. And yep. so then hilarity ensues, and some violence, and uh, they basically, Mark Wahlberg's character, Melvin Smiley, gets himself out of the situation. I don't want to give too many spoilers. So we got, we got, it's an excellent cast. We got Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Yes. Mine is the Funky Bunch. We have Captain Cisco, mm -hmm. you know, Stop doing his best pocket impression. Right. Yep. Penny back on Spencer for hire. And then we have the greatest book narrator the world has ever seen, Lou Diamond Phillips. Yeah. Um, he was also the he was also with Young Guns. La Bamba. All kinds of cool stuff. La Bamba, stuff. that's right. right. And, uh, oh, Star you ever Universe? Still book on tape, and if it's Lou Diamond Phillips, doesn't even matter if the book is crap. This guy is a fantastic narrator. He's my absolute favorite. 
Well, you did make a, a stand and deliver reference last week, Chris. I think that it was, uh, or maybe that was you, Robert. That was referring to anything with, uh, um, oh God, with the the dude from um, Star or Battlestar Galactica as a teacher. The, the who's the Edward cat? James Almost? Edward James Almost. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, what the hell are you talking about? You know where my brain went? <laughs> Lauren Green. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, but so you actually made a reference to Stand and Deliver last week, which of course co-stars yes. Lou Diamond Phillips. So we have many Lou Diamond Phillips references here. Yep. Yep. It was the best part about numbers. The TV okay. show. Oh, also, uh, he was also in Stargate Universe. I thought he did a pretty good job in Stargate Universe, if you happen to watch that. Yeah. Uh, a show, by the way, that ended before its time. Just saying. Just as it was getting interesting. Yes, exactly. Because it, yeah, it had a slow start to it, but uh, it was getting it interesting. That formula, yeah. Well, it's tough when you're doing Stargate from a ship. Well, you're also doing Stargate and not having it be snarky MacGyver. Right. Right. They, you know, they or the guy from Farscape. Serious bent to it. Uh, yeah. And SG One. I mean, it was space farce. Yes. Uh, which I liked. I liked the Spice Farce, but after the first season, it was on what Showtime. Oh uh, uh, yes, it was on Showtime. Time. Yeah. Uh, you know, after that, then it just went all farcical. Yeah. And then we should, yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah, going back to the big hit. <laughs> yeah. Before we get too far derailed. Uh, also, <laughs> Christina Applegate, who's also oh, usually. Yeah, she was the uh, the legitimate girlfriend, I guess, of of Melvin Smiley or the fiance. We should say, I guess, and uh, and I thought Bokeem Woodbine's character was hilarious. Crunch. I can't get him in my head. He was the guy that gave up dating women. Oh, for okay. Self pleasure, yeah. yes. <laughs> and he had the the sign on the uh, in the movie rental place that was you know the customer of the month for the adult section, and it was just a picture of him. <laughs> just hilarious. Yeah. Um, Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Antonio Sabato Jr was Vince and he's been in other things before as well. Uh, and then the girl that was the kidnappy who ends up becoming Mark Wahlberg's love interest, um, China Chow plays a character named Ke- uh, Keiko. And uh, that was, I think her first movie because it said in the credits introducing China Chow as uh, uh, Keiko Keiko. And so what was that? What has she done since? I have no idea. I didn't check into I- it. Adult but, films, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the movie is directed by Kirk Wong, and it's just one of those fun movies that basically it's Mark Wahlberg not too long after the Funky Bunch. This is did a post Boogie Nights, I think, right? Uh, I think it's pre Boogie Nights. Oh wow, okay, yeah, because I mean, I'm looking at um, IMDb right now. No, I'm sorry, it is post Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights was '97. This was '98. Yep. Oh, yeah. And then there was, what, one, two, three, four, five, six movies or so? No, it's a TV series. Five movies that he did before Boogie Nights. So this is really him coming off of the Funky Bunch and uh, getting into movies. And he's done some pretty good movies since. And I actually intend to enjoy him in movies. Uh, I thought he was excellent in The Other Guy. I thought he was funny in Ted. Um, he was a, He was good in Date Night. I thought it was good in Date Night. Um, what else have I seen with him in it? Uh, he was in, in Invincible, but I didn't see that one, but I heard good things about that. Italian Job was a fun movie. Um, apparently, he was in Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember that. He yeah, was going the- to the right Planet of the Apes. It was the reboot, but not the reboot reboot. Okay, right. The it was second, like the, the first reboot. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I don't so know. I tend the, to enjoy him. The Sniper was, movie, was, I think it was called The Shooter. Shooter, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, was, he, was in that. he just had Lone Survivor just came out. Uh, he's also in the new Transformers movie. Um, oh. So I, the one thing I didn't like him in, and it was Pain and Gain. Uh, and I don't think it was necessarily his acting. I just didn't like the movie. Okay. Because uh. it's based on a, a story. True story. Yeah, true story where people are actually killed. And then, yeah, it's just not a good story. And it kind of was advertised as a comedy but the it's rock. not. What's that? Was that the one with the rock? Yes. Yeah. There are Body some builders. Yeah. funny parts to that movie, but all in all, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I don't feel comfortable with that movie. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, because it's like it's, it's capitalizing. It's killing. It's well, no, but this is real life killing. This is not fake movie killing. That's different. Oh, so this being based sort of quote unquote based on a true story. Right. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's not cool. In my opinion, it's not. It's like you're profiting off of a pretty violent crime. Okay. And uh, that I just that didn't sit well with me. Although anything done by Michael Bay, you could say you're profiting off a pretty violent crime. <laughs> <laughs> Against humanity. Yes. Yeah, that's true, I, I suppose. But they it, do, hey, it, it, it does pro- fulfill at least one of the criteria of my three point explosions. Exactly, exactly. The only problem is he never got past anything but explosions. Right. Which I guess you could get better from Mr. Torque. Yes. Yes, from Borderlands 2, for those of you that haven't played the game. So, I really wanted... I had never seen this film before, and I really wanted to see it. I saw the cast, I said, oh, this seems really interesting, this could be a lot of fun. And, God, it bothered me. Um, Really? I thought the action was surprisingly bad. Really? They had The special effects were amazingly (laughs) awful. Well, there was like painted on the screen or something like that. I don't know what they were doing. Um, <laughs> the it, I, I can take it that it was if this whole movie was a joke, then I'm cool with it. And maybe I'm missing that because there's a lot of good people in this movie, and maybe it was just a big joke, and I, that's fine. But it was, for example, Christina Applegate played a Jewish woman in this movie with a bad stereotyped accent. Oh yeah. And she was, you know, I mean, it was between sort of things for her. It wasn't when, you know, she was making a series of not great films. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, I think that she has more capability than she showed there. Um, You know what I think this has been? Remember how with Hamlet 2? Yes. I I didn't get the joke of its badness, Mm -hmm. which really appealed to you. Okay. I think it's the same thing. Okay. Except reversed. I saw the whole thing as, you know, tongue in cheek. Yes. Taking a shot at all the bad hitman movies. And so here's the hitman that's conflicted because the victims might not like him or the victims' families might think poorly of him. Uh, kind of a thing, that over the topness. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah, I think what happened is you and I are just reversed on those two movies. That's yeah, distinctly possible. It's a joke. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah. not a, it's not a serious movie by any means. No, 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 no. It's, no. it's, 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 yeah. it's not heat. It's not no. one of those things. That, that's yeah, funny. I think it's a par- I took it as a parody movie. And so I, I accept it better that way. It just, I don't know. It, it came off really wrong to me that it was just, I was just watching these things. I'm like, he's on a bungee cord going up and down on the bungee cord shooting as he goes up and <laughs> shooting on the way down. And then he jumps out of a building connected to it, but then goes flying back up at the bad explosion and then lands in a pool. That was and, the best part. Well, the that world. was because the, like, the explosion <laughs> blew the anchor out right. of the, uh, so he's going to fall down. I mean, that right. was... Yeah, good physics. I, physics in this was totally realistic. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's some serious physics in the big hit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so on the other side, it's I actually really liked, liked that tracks how many times people would actually die. Yeah. The things oh, that happen. Yeah. Is yeah. this one in that one? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. But uh, I actually really liked Lou Diamond Phillips in this film. I thought his character was ridiculously over the top, but in a fun way. So for those who have not seen this film, um, it starts off with he and his, you know, they're the three of them, Mark Wahlberg, Lou Diamond Phillips, and um, it was Bokeem Woodbine, right? That go in to basically kill somebody at the beginning. Oh, uh, yeah, and Anthony um, Sabato Jr. is oh, in there. Oh, right, right, right. So, so it's the four of them that go in. And basically, they're all sort of hanging out outside while Mark Wahlberg subsequently kills, like, 174 people. Um, you know, with, with one clip. He doesn't, like, reload and actually, you know, bullet spraying everywhere. You know, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> Bullet free, uh, a bull, you know, and un- endless bullet existence. Um, but they're out in the in the hallway, and, and Mark uh, calling on the, on the headset. I need help. I need backup here. And they're like, Oh yeah, we're, we've just got attacked. And they're just sh- they're just standing there at the door, just shooting off. Like, Oh yeah, we're we're taking fire right now. We're, we'll do our best, but we're taking fire. Um, I really <laughs> liked that. That was great. Uh, yeah. That was that was original. And then they rush in at the last second and start shooting the dead bodies. <laughs> and then claim that they got the kill because they got a $25,000 bonus for getting the kill. And they, you know, shot, shot the dead body a couple times. Um, and so th- there was there was a lot of fun from that perspective. I, I liked that. Um, but 
I think that any time that Mark Wahlberg was on the screen, it felt like him doing the exact same character from Boogie Nights. It, you know, again, I, most of the films that you rattle off, Chris, I actually like from him. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a different character there. He's able to shift and be a different guy. Mm-hmm. I think then nope. he was still doing one thing. Oh, uh, see, he I don't know. Oh, so Mark's an actor, not as an actor. Yeah. More as a guy who's interesting who delivers lines. Okay. So. You must, uh, but I'll take I, a be more in it than I'm seeing. Yeah. I, I, I see him as an actor. I think he has definitely changed a lot from the mid 90s. And you can see from one movie to the next him getting better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, like I said, I tend to enjoy the stuff that he's in. Not Ooh. everything, but I this tend to enjoy it. I'm on him. I don't think, uh, for example, um, um, Harrison Ford. Yeah. I don't think he can act either. But I love Harrison Ford films. Right. Right. It's him being in interesting films, delivering interesting lines as, well, Harrison Ford in a hat. You know, Harrison Ford. <laughs> well, you, you <laughs> like Harrison line. Ford pre about 1989, let's say. I don't know that you liked Harrison Ford in the last 20 years, but we'll ignore that point. Yeah, well, well, what has he been in the last 20 years? Many, well, many, many things. Lots of movies, man. Lots of movies that did not star Rutger Hauer. <laughs> 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 In fact, uh, the, Venn di- uh, the Venn diagram of <laughs> Rutger Hauer and uh, Harrison Ford, I think there's only one movie in the intersection. I think that would yes, be that's the start Blade of the Runner. beginning of the career, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this damn film. Was- <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah. in, for example, Ender's Game, 42. Um, looking for the later stuff that you said I didn't like. Yeah, Ender's Game. That was like two years ago or a year ago. Yeah. I don't know. I saw that. Air Force One, one. Or whatever that one, yeah, yeah, uh, and it's hard to come up with them because he's been in so many movies. I have liked nothing he's done since Air Force One. All right, there you I go. feel good about this then. That, All was right. about, that was later though. That was like ninety six or something. Ninety seven. Ninety seven. Mm-hmm. This doesn't bode well then for the See, newest I, Star Wars. I movie. thought he was. I I thought he was okay. <laughs> clear in present danger. Well, that's my favorite Clancy book, but it was not my oh, favorite yeah, yeah. movie. You got to set it aside. I mean, yeah. pretend that the book doesn't exist. Yeah, because uh, the book was brilliant, yeah. but the movie was—he was fine. He was I fine. just more Super Alec Baldwin. Fun. Put him back in there. I thought, yeah, Air Force One. I thought he was fine. Six days, seven nights. That was the weird thing with that woman who flips Hesh. out right and sleeps yeah. in a and Yeah, yeah, and then oh god, then he goes totally to hell. <laughs> wow, these are really bad. He didn't oh. make another Indiana Jones film that we can all uh, snicker at. Wait. Why? It's based on true events. <laughs> there the were three in the ancient Indiana alien films. theory of there were three civilizations. Three. Yeah. Two and a half. I don't really like the second one. <laughs> <laughs> short round. You can't diss short round. Actually, I kind of like short round. It was. Kate Capshaw screaming the whole damn film that drove me crazy. It was a I, prequel. Well, I see. I did not realize that the third one, the one, the um, one with Last the Crusade. Holy Grail. Yeah. yeah, that was. A, is that supposed to be a prequel before Temple of Doom? All of them were prequels, except f- and uh, so it was. If you do the ordering, it was Temple of. Do- oh, sorry, it was um, Last Crusade, and then Temple of Doom, and then Raiders of the Lost Ark, and then the one where he was in a refrigerator. Oh. I had no idea because I was like, you know, the entire time, like, I, I not only found this out like, you know, what, a few months ago when Robert told me this, because the entire time I'm thinking to myself, you know, for years now watching The Last Crusade, what happened to Short Round? Oh, yeah. No, no. I knew that one came first. But see, I thought it was that one and then Last Crusade and then the first one. You may be right. So the first one's the last I'll, one. No, I'll totally go with whatever you say, man. I'm not 100% sure. I, I do know that, that the everything came before Raiders of Lost Ark. Let's put it that way. I wasn't sure about the ordering. Hmm. See? You learn new stuff every day, kids. But, you know, when you stop learning, that's when life ends. <laughs> Especially important stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to count on here. When, when, 
Harrison, when you when you want to to update us, because I'm assuming Harrison Ford's one of our our listeners here. Oh yeah. Uh, if you wanted to send us a note updating us on what the actual ordering is, that's great. I know you're rehabbing right now because of the broken leg. Um, so it's some downtime. We can't film Star Wars right now. Uh, so you're spending some time here listening to us. Um, please come on here, correct us on the timeline. It would be really helpful to us. Yeah, and if Harrison can't, Steven Spielberg, you know, Steve, if we could have you, you know, we could have you as a guest. It's no problem. Um, we could do a Spielberg day. I'd be willing yeah. to do a Spielberg day. Uh, well, I think we should have him on. I know he listens to the show. No. And so, yeah. Long time friends. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry about that. We're back. <laughs> and, uh, well, why don't we move on to Robert Rambles? Sounds good. <laughs> I should tell you so that you don't waste your time. You can't make me angry. Please spend an hour with him. <laughs> okay, so uh, today, no podcast. Uh, I got a book. So actually, I have a series of books. Uh, the Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. Uh, so far, it's 15 novels plus. was done into a TV series that they totally butchered that, that pissed me off because it would have been awesome. Uh, Wait a minute. We have to clarify for a second here, Robert. You've talked but, about us over and over again. That you read fifteen book series and don't like don't the like books, books, and you say you read it, read it over and over. I love these books. Okay. Okay. No. 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 This I wholeheartedly recommend. All right. All right. No, I'm saying they they butchered the TV series because it it should have been awesome. The TV series still worth watching. Um, a couple of them are good. The ones based on the the books, the episodes that are based on stories from the books are great. It's where they went sideways for some reason. They decided he couldn't carry a staff in Chicago, that somehow that would be a problem on TV, so they gave him a hockey stick. So he's going around <laughs> a hockey stick, like somehow that's inconspicuous. Go Wings. Yeah, he had no, a, wait, that's the wrong team. a really beat up Blue Beetle, uh, VW Beetle, that <laughs> he Hawks. had in the uh, books. Yeah. They substituted this crappy World War like Korean era army jeep for, for no reason whatsoever. World War changed Korea? Their names. They changed some of the lore. It was just dumb. Uh, yeah, World War Korea yes. was a horrible conflict for our country. Anything <laughs> 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 the jeeps and the jeeps. The last time I saw them used on like TV was Mash. So I don't know what the real jeeps looked on. I have to do it based on TV. It was used in Mash. Must be authentic. So it was Korea. Because <laughs> <laughs> everything else about Mash was authentic. It was. It was. That's that's how it happened. Fair enough. That's the way the army runs. It's all run by a bunch of jackasses and incompetents. Wait. Well. Um, so that's uh, Robert Macy, CEO. Uh, <laughs> you can follow Robert at. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, See, this, uh, this is me washing my hands of <laughs> comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, these are about a professional wizard in the city of Chicago, uh, that you can find in the phone book who will do wizardy stuff for you. Uh, it's actually a fairly kind of tongue-in-cheek series. Uh, it's a lot of fun. They read very well. They read very quick. Uh, it's a very popular series. I mean, these novels, I mean, there's, what, 15 now. Uh, so novel after novel after novel is a bestseller. Uh, I really enjoy them. I read them as soon as they come out. It's one of those things where I've got them pre-ordered uh, on my Kindle, so they just appear. And it's like, yes, book, woo! Uh, Audio book by uh, Diamond Phillips? I don't know if he narrates these. Ooh, it's a good question. If well, does, Lou, um, you know, if you want to do Robert a, a favor, you could start narrating yeah. the Dresden File books. Books narrated by Lou Diamond Phillips. No, I can't type it fast enough to actually figure that out. Um, so anyway, these I, I wholeheartedly recommend. I think you guys would dig these. At least I'm, I'm darn near certain that Chris would get into these. Uh, Steven, I don't know so much. He may, may not. But I, I know a little bit better some of the books Chris has read because I've seen his bookshelves um, and books that he's recommended to me. So I think you would dig these, man. Uh, What's the first one called? Stormfront. Yeah. And every once in a while they'll go on sell, um, like uh, Kindle sells where you can get them for like a buck or two bucks. Okay. Uh, and those are great. Or they'll come out with little mixed anthologies like you can get five of them for $3 or something. Uh, they come in little waves. Uh, definitely worth reading. I can get you a um, paperback of these. I have a lot of the yearly ones. I'm just about done my current book, so maybe I'll check uh, Stormfront out. 
uh, when I get done this one. I think you do. You got, it's a it's a quick read. If nothing yeah. else, you won't feel like you got bogged down forever. Uh, they aren't worn PC uh, size books. Right. I'm guessing 300 pages. Okay. Sure. You know, fairly sure. short for a modern novel. Right. Right. Super super long for a novel written in like the 70s or 80s. Okay. Interesting point. James Marsters will be doing the. 14th Jim uh, Butcher Dresden File book, audiobook. James Marsters, of course, at Spike, Spike on yep. uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, is he and the narrator? He's doing at least the 14th book. I can't tell if he's done all of them or not. But And I don't no. think he's really British either. I don't know. Uh, I, I played the Buffy the Vampire Slayer video game for PlayStation 2, and they actually had the voices, um, except for, I don't think, Sarah Michelle Gellar. Mm. Okay. Or Alison Hannigan. Um, but they had the voices for the other folks. I, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong. It is James uh, Marsters for everything. Yeah. And um, they had uh, sort of film clips of them talking about the show uh, as part of the extras that came with the game. And he was talking about how he was a faker with his accent. Mm. So if I'm remembering this correctly, of course, I could, this could be like some kind of alternate reality I'm remembering, too. That happens sometimes. No, no, that's that's I mean, there's obviously a lot of people who do that. I actually... Every once in a while, forget that Christian Bale is British since he's done so much stuff yeah. in English and he does all of his interviews in English, you know, with an American accent and so forth. Like, it's just he flips back and forth depending on what's going on. Um, well, the one that I find most drastic is uh, Mimi Driver. Okay. She has a very thick Scottish accent. Okay. And But oh. you'd never know. Hmm. She does a brilliant American accent. Okay. Um, uh, but most Brits do a much better American accent than we do. <laughs> well, there's not usually a call for a lot of Americans to do British stuff. Um, I wouldn't say there's a lot of British. Yeah, it's always like Kevin Costner bad. Oh well, yeah. Uh, well, come on, Costner can do lots of bad accents. He did the uh, the the Boston accent for uh, what was it uh, the the JFK or one of those films? Not JFK, that other one. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was JFK. No, but he was JFK, but he didn't do the Boston accent for that. He did J- he did the Boston accent for um, the Bay of Pigs movie. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, I didn't either. I spared myself that film. Yeah, after Dances with Wolves and Waterworld. I, and The I, Postman, like these like four-hour epic movies. Yeah, Waterworld, greatest movie ever. You're going to make us watch that, aren't you? No. No, no, no I'm not no, re-watching no. it. Come on. No one's now. got time for that. <laughs> no one's got time for that. Well, I can tell you, there's water, and then there's jet skis, and there's, there's a world, and there's go juice, and dirt. There's we found gasoline. dirt. Yeah, and he drinks his pee. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. <laughs> That's like a normal Wednesday. Come on, yeah, no, like who hasn't done that? Yeah. <laughs> who has it? Yeah, right, sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, back to the Dresden file. Uh, fantastic book series. Uh, definitely recommend it. Well, could you see them remaking it into a TV show? And if so, where? Mm. Yeah. Would it be an AMC kind of thing? Would it be sci-fi? Would it be... Well, no, it was sci-fi the oh, first time. Oh, sci-fi time. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, they're the ones who right. just butchered it. Oh, God. Uh, I, I think thought it the was show was fine, I, but I didn't know the books. So I thought the show was fine. Yeah, well, there were two episodes of the show that were were great because they were based on the book. Mm-hmm. The rest of them, though, it's just like, oh, come on. It could, been, it could have been awesome. There's another guy who has, he's either a Brit or a Scott, that, that main actor who is doing an American accent. He's very good with an American accent. And he's a great actor, so I don't, it wasn't him. It just, it was so Okay, let's put it a slightly different way. Would it benefit from the sort of BBC, uh, the way that they're doing Sherlock, where you'll just do like a two hour, you know, three two hour movies would be the whole season? Oh, it would be brilliant. Okay. Yeah, that what they should do is, yeah, just shoot each book. Okay. Because uh, the books, they aren't written, you know, as faux screenplays. Mm-hmm. But they would translate, you can translate them damn near directly for television. And if you don't need the high budget version of it, you know, it doesn't have to be a $100, $100 million movie. No. Right. Yeah. Well, but you know, you, you run the issue with magic, maybe, you know. Yeah, but it's not – well, in the later books, it gets to be a much bigger deal. But in the earlier books, it's fairly subtle. Uh, it's mainly more the special effects would be him getting near any piece of technology and it going wrong. 
Um, mm. And some of the shooting, you, well, you couldn't do it in Hollywood. You'd have to go to Canada or something because you have to shoot it mostly at night and you have to shoot it mostly poorly lit with candles. <laughs> um, because he's, he can't be around any kind of high technology for the most part. It blows out. Okay. Okay. Um, so it so, could be like cinema verite or something. No, no, no. You just need a Canadian, like like they did with the X-Files. Mm-hmm. You know, take it up to Vancouver, and then everything's great. You could shoot at night and not get charged $8 bazillion by the crew. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, t- uh, two thumbs up. Thumbs Fair up. enough. Where's the camera? Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you're both Siskel and Ebert. Well done. I am. Siskel, Siskel and Ebert. So, yeah. That was awful. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's move on to what the hell's next, Stephen. Stephen's Steven. next. Oh God, Stephen with this thing that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Self-realization. I was thinking of the words of Socrates, who said, "I drank what." So. It became exceptionally clear to me after we've done these last. Uh, uh, super happy fun times that we don't have the same tastes in movies or media in general. Um, you know, we, we've had this conversation. We've gone around and said, well, okay, Robert is obsessed with Rupert, Rucker Hauer because uh, it's his real birth father or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But they're awesome. Yeah. No. Um, Chris, of course, <laughs> gave us the possibly worst film that's ever been produced or directed by Stephen King. It is, that is true. It is the worst (laughs) film ever directed by Stephen King. It's also the best. best film ever done by Stephen King. But I'm going to focus on the negative here. Uh, You know, and and we can debate as to whether or not Hamlet 2 was the worst thing that Robert has ever seen, or if it really was uh, a catchy, stupid film. Um, But what what came up to me was thinking, well, if if I'm flipping through the channels and something comes on, is there that film? Is there, are there, you know, one or two or three films that you come on and, my God, I can't move past it. I have to watch this. And I can talk about it with my wife. My wife would say, if Born Identity comes on TV, she will stop and watch that film from wherever it is to the end. Um, I've got a good friend of mine who, um, uh, he, he, if he sees a few good men come on, he'll have to watch it. And if it comes on, if they sometimes play it like two or three times in a row, he will watch it for like nine hours. All right. It's a little insane. Yeah. Where does that leave you guys? Is the, is there that film? Or we can take the other question, but let's start there. Let's start with the TV perspective, and then we'll loosen it up from there. Yes. Um, when my wife and I are watching TV together, if we flip through the guide and find True Lies is on, okay, we stop and watch True Lies. All right. Almost always. All Even right. though we own the movie, so it's not like, you know... It's the only way we can see this movie. But in fact, it becomes a lot inefficient, a lot more inefficient to have to watch it that way. Absolutely, it does. But we still do it. You know, yeah. almost always we watch that. Fantastic. What is it about it? What 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 sucks you guys in? Uh, I think it's the interplay between Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis. Really? Okay. I think I don't really know to be honest with you, so I'm just making that up. I don't know but... if it's a Tom Arnold thing. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe my wife has something for Tom Arnold. I certainly don't. <laughs> 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 oh, I really like that film too. Yeah. So I kind of get yeah. that. Yeah. See, the problem is, is I'm tr- I have to think back to when I flipped through TV, and that's fair. That's why I was going to pose the second question. But uh, it used to be Godzilla films, and then after that, Back to the Future for a while. That's fair. I'd watch that all the way through. And then when we're talking more like cable, probably The Matrix for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. The first film. All right. Uh, there are no subsequent ones. So oh, yes. uh, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Oh, that's a great one. That yeah. would be. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah. Groundhog Day. All right. That's fair. Um, what Again, do you have a perspective as to why you would watch one of these versus the other ones? Is it just great films? Gotta love it. But. Or is it there's something like, oh man, there's I just I gotta laugh. I gotta something. Uh, Groundhog Day just appeals to me on so many levels. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's an asinine comedy. And it just 
every, it cracks me up. I like the idealized version of Punk Satani. So much so that when we moved to PA, the year after we moved here, my wife and I, for our anniversary, <laughs> went to Punk Satani, thinking what it was like it was in the movie. They're thinking it's going to be awesome. It's this idea, perfect small town of Americana. You know, it's going to go to all. It's, oh, it's just any other damn Pennsylvania small town, right. which is fine. But it was just like, oh, <laughs> you know, we got all the way out there. We actually found out where Gobbler's Knob was, which is not at all the way it is in the movie. Oh, of course not. No, it's the this yeah. stupid park on a hill yep. with a sign that's been hit by a bullet way too many times. Uh, so no, just some about that film. And I like Bill Murray. I like yeah. a lot of the films he's in, but you know, it's not like I want to watch What About Bob every time it comes on. Oh, that's like, hilarious. Oh, you know, like Ten times. Sailing. Jesus. Well, I'm a sailor. And baby the steps. Man baby knew, steps. <laughs> yeah. The man who knew too little, I have uh, a little bit of an obsession with. It just makes me laugh every time. You got him. You got, like, the man with the biggest eyebrows ever. Yeah. Uh, God, what's his name? Chris Elliott? Peter, no, no, no. It's, yeah. Peter Gallagher. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, you know, like, eyebrows are like, you know, this yeah. bit. <laughs> uh, fantastic actor. I mean, he's just... Yeah. It's one of those guys. Um, maybe 20 years ago. I guess they're comedies. Now I'm thinking of mostly comedies. They're uh, Zora the Gay Blade. <laughs> With George Hamilton. Does that Did that come on TV like non-cable channel TV? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's very PG, man. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm thinking George something different. Hamilton and George Hamilton. <laughs> so George Hamilton playing Zorro. You know, the very machismo. Right. Or with, you know, his, his skin, he's got that tan that's like so dark that it's almost black. It's just an intense tan. And then him basically in white face playing his effete English brother that was separated at birth kind of a thing who's, who's gay. Uh, and he gets hurt at some point and his brother steps in and his brother, of course, doesn't use a sword. He uses a whip. <laughs> it's fantastic if you've never seen Zorro to get it it's totally politically incorrect but please I, don't I, recommend that as a film we have to watch yeah I don't <laughs> want that to come up on my Netflix now. yeah uh, you've ruined it for me I'm sorry you yeah know. yeah I just no. old silly comedy you know <laughs> I guess comedies yeah just gravitate to certain comedies that are just I think just, all right, so so wow. you had the the statement that you know you don't really tend to flip through channels anymore. I know that you have every sort of streaming thing that does exist out there in one way or another. Yeah, so I have to actively seek things now. Right, so that that becomes the question of do you actively seek things? Do you, is it the same kind of thing? Is it where like you know what I just need to go watch Back to the Future again, or I need to go watch Groundhog Day again? Is, do you have that same experience still, or is it now you just don't end to watch? You don't watch those anymore. No, Firefly. Okay. Yeah, because that's available on almost every way you want to get it. Um, yeah. yeah, I've got it on. I got the DVD, seen that, got the Blu rays, <laughs> you know, seen those way too many times. Uh, yeah, Firefly. Okay. It's on all my iPads. I've got <laughs> downloaded versions of Firefly. Uh, all I of my iPads. I like that phrase. Front to back, all, all, well, it's only like 13 episodes. Right, it's not right. 20. All right. 20 times? So I've seen it a lot. I've only seen the movie three times, I think. Serenity it doesn't have the same appeal to me. I like the snarky humor of the of the show. They're also, only I, tangentially related to each other. Like 20 minutes, too. So it's not a huge time commitment. I'll have it on, like, on one of my monitors while I'm doing stuff on one of the other ones. That kind of a thing. Yeah. Or, or playing on my iPad while I'm, you know, taking a shower or something. So you don't do, you do that? You take 40-minute showers? That's... Weird. It's like twenty-two minutes, man. <laughs> twenty-two minute shower? No, no. You take like, <laughs> walk in, you set it up on the counter, and you take your shower. You grab it, and you go get ready for the rest of the day, kind of a thing. So, yeah, I'm bald. Actually, it doesn't take me long. I uh, don't. I don't take my iPad in the shower with me. No. So I, I shave worry. shower too. I don't shave. Yeah, so it takes me a, a while. Well, if I don't shave in the shower, even if I use an electric razor, I bleed all over the place. Seems fair. So I found if I do it in the shower, you get the more, you know, your face really loosens up from the heat. Yeah. 
and I don't bleed nearly as much. Uh, I should buy stock in like witch hazel somehow. <laughs> so, all right. So the new movie that Robert likes to watch is him bleeding everywhere. Okay, that's right. Yeah. That fits Chris's criteria is, in terms white? of uh, criteria number one, number two, number two, number two. Yes, yes. Yeah. Number two. Yeah, um, it has nudity too. So you're <laughs> all just, yeah, but it's not the right kind. It's a specific kind of nudity that entertains the. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, the uh, yeah. So I don't think there's really much that I actually go out and say. Oh, you know, it's been X months since I've seen movie Y. I should see movie Y again. You Is know, that a I, formula of yours X over Y. Yeah, plus I'm, something. Okay, I'm a physicist. This is just how I think, dude. <laughs> So, yeah, and I, I guess it used to be like Highlander was like one I wanted to see every so often. I don't know why. Um, when I was in high school, my brother had this like, I don't know, this obsession with the burbs, you know, the Tom Hanks movie. And so like every day before we left for high school, we would watch like 20 minutes of the oh, burbs. Man. Right. And we had it on VHS. So, you know, you just pick it right back up where you left off. We run to the end of the movie. What would he do? Rewind it. Start it again. And this was like, this went on for months. I mean, (laughs) months of constant the burbs. I could probably still quote that damn movie. Um, So I've never had that kind of obsession with a movie. At some point. What's that? I didn't hear that. Tim take a severe blow to the head at some point. (laughs) Well, we did martial arts for many years. So, yes, Yes. both of us have taken several blows to the head. That uh, That explains a lot, man. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't know. Um, I I would say that if I go back to the sort of the VHS days, um, clearly what I would watch were one of three things. Either the Star Wars trilogy, Mm. um, and I'd seen those way too many times um i would have watched um uh when when clerks came out i know robert you don't enjoy that film but that was a film for some reason clicked with me and i watched it over and over and and over again Mm. um and so i could quote that one backwards forwards upside down and you know as high as some of the characters in, in the film um I don't know if there's anything else that I would ever have, have done in that time that I would watch again and again. Maybe Better Off Dead. Um, okay. That was through that time period. Now, if you fast forward a bit time, because um, I don't think on, when TV, I think I was more apt to watch TV shows. So I would watch, you know, pick up the A-Team or pick up whatever reruns. Simpsons. My sure. God, I've watched every episode of Simpsons a hundred times or something. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, sorry, I'll take that back. I watched the first, like, 12 or 14 seasons of Simpsons a bunch of times, and there's a point where I said, okay, I think I've seen those jokes four times. Um, and I meant the brand new episode had the same jokes that they've seen had in four other episodes. Then I sort of, it wore out for me. Uh, I still watch it. I think it's out of habit more than anything else. It's Sunday at 8 o'clock. My God, I'm going to watch The Simpsons. You know, I think that's what it boils down to. Fair enough. Um and then today, I would say, yeah, I mean, it's it's some of the same things you guys said. You know, I, I said my wife and I will watch uh, Born Identity. Um, our previous award winner here, uh, I'd watch Die Hard, Bruce mm-hmm. Willis. Oh, yeah. Um, that one I can't not watch. Oh, yeah. It's a movie. Yeah, um, and then I go through phases. So I watched Days of Confused probably for four or five years repeatedly. Uh, but I've sort of stopped watching that one. Um, and there's there's a couple of those cycles. I did the Groundhog Day thing for a while, my wife and I did, but she kind of wore that out on me because uh, she would watch it over and over again. And then she had to buy it, and then she made my son watch it, and he was a uh, get it. It's like, yeah, he was five. It didn't really work for him. Um, so, I don't know. There, but there is something about that. I, I like that notion of what do you connect to that you would watch – over and over again, because there's something about media. And so that's, what's interesting to me is I think we have a lot of the same touchstones in terms of, you know, these films we would all watch. But then once we get past sort of the, the mainstream classics, which not everybody would watch. I mean, I wouldn't say that everybody would say, oh, we need to pick up True Lies and go watch True Lies. But I think right. all three of us would say, hey, you know, if True Lies is on, I'd be more than likely to watch it. Yeah. All right. Or Commando. Oh, yes. The all best right. Alyssa Milano movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that the last? No, 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 no. She had made other other films. Um, but, 
Because Die Hard is the pseudo sequel to Commando, so I'm just gonna I'll, I'll stop there. I'm done. <laughs> I, I you, you've killed my conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's got Ray Dog John. <laughs> Moving on. That's good. Uh, Soul Man. That was the one that she was in. That was uh, offensive in every possible way. Yeah, not in every possible way. <laughs> it wasn't a very watchable film, so it was kind of offensive that way. <laughs> that just that's it was bad. <laughs> On the Rutger Hauer scale, it was a two. On the Rutger Hauer scale, it's a nine. <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> Thinking about it, are you kidding? Oh. oh man. Uh, we're going to watch Blade, Blind Fury. I'm saying. You've shown me the intro to it. I think I already was, you know, vomiting a little in my mouth at that point. <laughs> it's the best film. <laughs> I have that. I think I have that over here. I think Robert loaned that one to me. So, oh, God. Four years ago. Yeah. yeah 17 more to go. <sighs> Although I think we should do Nighthawks next. It's him and Stallone. That or the hard way. You guys seen the hard way? Uh, probably not, not the not version the you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mom. It's a film with Michael J. Fox in it. <laughs> yeah, certainly not that one. <laughs> and, uh, Let's move on. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, there's Chris. Um, okay, so <laughs> now that we've destroyed Steven's thing, which was going so well, <laughs> brought up Commando. Let's move to Chris's curiosities. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. Yeah, Ghostbusters. I'm going watch that one, too. No, wait. I've got a visual for Chris's segment. And we uh, that the greatest birthday card ever. You, by the way, you're welcome. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. You're welcome. Okay. Not, and yeah. <laughs> anyway, we could we could do another segment later on with that card. Um. So <laughs> this week I'm talking about a book series that actually just the first book of a series that I've been reading. Uh, sort of stumbled upon. I was uh got back from my vacation and wanted to um read another book. And decided, all right, I'm going to hop on Amazon. I'm going to do a search sci-fi book. All right. (laughs) And so one of the first hits (laughs) that comes up was this book, because apparently I'm such a cheap bastard that I have everything listed by price. And free is, of course, the first thing that's going to come up when you've got it filtered that way. And uh, so the book is called The Last Praetorian by Mike Smith. And it's one of these self-publication jobs. And I was like, well, it's free. What the hell? I mean, it's not going to cost me anything. This could be... You know, this could be a shitstorm or it could be perfectly fine. And uh, it turned out to be a lot better than I expected it to. I started reading the book before I read what it was about on Amazon because I figured it was like I was afraid it was no commitment. And so I'll talk about how Amazon describes the book a little later. But uh, the book is essentially <laughs> part of what's good. called the Redemption series. And the uh, the theme of this is basically can somebody sort of correct past sins, all right, past mistakes that they've made. And the book um, starts off with this guy named Jonathan Raddick, who is um, the commander of the emperor's personal bodyguards. Now, the book start, um, is, you know, hundreds of years in the future. So this emperor is like the emperor of the galaxy. And he is there. He's the head of the bodyguard. And uh, he's put on a mission to go and escort the imperial princess to this planet <laughs> where. <laughs> <laughs> bear with me, OK? <laughs> where... <laughs> All right. Just bear with me here. He's, he's to this planet. And she's Just supposed to like get an education or something there. Okay. <laughs> so as they leave and they get like part of the way to the wormhole to jump to this planet, the, they get an announcement that the emperor has been assassinated and they need to return back to the ship. Right. Well, commander Raddick is a pretty smart guy. He realizes this is all like a play. It was like, there was a coup and he knows that if he takes the princess back to the ship, like there, she's going to be killed or held hostage or whatever. Right. And he realizes that he's going to be ambushed if he keeps going forward. So the rest of his guard that he commands, you know, protects them as they escape. And the book then proceeds with two different stories. One is in their present day where um, he has essentially um, 
requit the the military and is basically the CEO of a logistics company, and he gets a warning that you know the the new government is about to be attacked and fails. Okay, and it's about to be attacked and, and go down. And then the other story is five years previous. Uh, highlighting the events of their escape and how he got her, the princess, to this planet. Okay. And along the way during this escape, he falls in love with the princess and she falls in love with him. Obviously. Okay. And so Half that's to the hut and right <laughs> it's not it's not <laughs> what, do, what do the english people say right there's like five different storylines out there in all the world right so it's not it's not anything new but it's a fun read okay man for zero dollars for zero dollars it's a fun read in fact i enjoyed it so much that i went up and bought the other two books in the series which are each like three bucks a piece <gasps> yeah that, uh, that that's a Good recommendation, man. If your free book sucks you into buying more. Yeah. So now let's talk about how Amazon describes the book. If you if you go back and if I, calls the book. If I had read <laughs> if I had read the description of this book, I might not have downloaded it. Because basically <laughs> the description describes this book as a sci-fi slash romance novel. Okay. Okay. Now it's more of a military sci-fi book. Okay. Okay. I don't know why they orient it with a romance novel. I mean, there's when you think romance novel, you think of like, you know, constant sex scenes throughout the book and there's a love interest, there's a relationship that develops in the book, but the book is also about science fiction. It's about, you know, battling uh people who are coming in to destroy the new government that was created after the em- emperor was killed. And so right. it's yeah. not Hammer Slammers. No. Uh, the Codominium books. No. Because those are pretty hardcore military sci-fi. Yeah. yeah, and so I'm not really into military sci-fi necessarily, but I had f- I don't think I would be into a hardcore military sci-fi book. But this is just sort of more fun. Now, with that being said, I've read the second book in the series, and that is definitely, I wouldn't say it's a romance book, but it definitely has a lot more of that element in it. And the uh, third book is a young adult book, and the fourth with, book with is... vampires and sparkly magicians. <laughs> <laughs> now, the third book, I'm 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 most of the way through the third book, and it's it goes back more towards the um, first book in terms of more about the action, more about the military sci-fi kinds of things. So, I would say uh, it's a strong recommendation from me because there's very little effort you have to put in up front there's no risk right the first one's free the other two are four three bucks and uh it's a fun read it's a fast read i'm a slow reader but i've been able to actually i downloaded the third book friday night and i'm already 64 percent of the way through the book and i mean i'm not a fast reader by any measure so I would definitely recommend it uh start with the first one because again there's no commitment there and just be aware that the second one second one don't start with the second one. Okay. Yeah, don't start with the second one. Because the guy that wrote this book actually wrote it as um, a trilogy. It wasn't like, oh, look, this book did well. I'm going to write another one. Right? It actually ha- ends with a cliffhanger, and the second book ends with a cliffhanger. And so it was clear that this guy, when he sat down to write this, he wrote it. He wanted three books and, 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 and to tell this whole story. Well, his Amazon biography says that he is a project manager. So, of course, he's plotted out exactly what he's going to do and how he's going to do it and how well, much time he's going to spend for each section right. and how much well, total hours. I became a CEO of a logistics company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to think. I was thinking, and the CEO of FedEx comes back to save the universe. Now, there is, there is something, though, I have to say. And this could be important and may be important to a lot of science fiction fans out there. The science... Is, well, okay. Science with science fiction. Um, obviously, there's a future book, right? There's always like a suspension of disbelief that you have to to do, right? Yeah. However, some basic physics that we know really well is wrong in this book. Okay. And so, and I don't want to go through a list of all the because it's not fair to the author. He's not a physicist. It's not fair to go through. But there's some pretty you know things i was like wait a minute that's not true or that's not you know that's not and it, but it could upset real hardcore science fiction fans 
like that are are serious about the the genre. Um, the space battles are. I don't think he understands a sense of scale in space, and so things don't happen necessarily within a couple kilometers of each other. You wouldn't take ships of the size within two kilometers unless you're ramming them. You know these kinds of things where the sense of scale, it's not quite there, and. And it's like, again, it's it's kind of a nitpicky thing. If you're willing to like forget about that and just enjoy the book, you'll have a great time. If you're really hung up on scientific but details, you know. accuracy, you're going to find some problems. So, in fact, I might get it read tonight. <laughs> yeah, actually, you might. You're a fast reader. You're a lot faster than me. He's and already halfway do- done with the book. He started yeah. reading it during this conversation. <laughs> and I, the guy could stand with an editor, too, because there are definitely some grammatical errors and some spelling mistakes that are in there that... Uh, well, that happens a lot with the self-published guys. Exactly. And so you, you, I don't hold that against him at all um, because, again, I had a good time. Yeah. And that's really ultimately what matters. Yeah, I've been, I read a lot of the self-published stuff. Um, and it's, it's very hit and miss. Sometimes the ideas are brilliant, but damn, it's just like, Oh, please become successful. So you can hire an editor. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of what I feel about this guy, <laughs> you know, get an editor, get some beta readers, whatever. Um, but just tighten it up a little bit. And, uh, he, I think he's got a good mind. I think he has a real good ability to put a story together. Because it's not easy to write a trilogy and make it actually not be this overdrawn out kind of thing. I mean, it it's, really it feel very stretchy. Yeah, this book really does, or this story really does require three books to tell. Right. Uh, at least it's only it seven does. pages long, but we'll ignore that. Book. Well, who knows? It's a Kindle, right? I got an electronic format. It says I'm sixty percent of the way done. What have I might have read? I might have read ten real physical pages. You know, <laughs> you're like, wow, I did such a good job. It only took me five days to I've run got, ten pages. I've got an old lady font where you know there's like <laughs> there's one, one word and two yeah. lines across the screen. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, I recommend it. Uh, it's a fun read, and like I said, just don't get hung up on the details, and you're gonna be fine. All right. Okay. Bitching. Um, well, let's wrap it up for this week. Chris? Okay. Remember, boys and girls, whatever you do this week, just keep it awesome. The Hour of Awesome is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all the other Jester Cat shows at www.jestercat.com. You can also email the show at hoa at jestercat.com. Catch the show live Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern at www.jestercat.com slash TV. Follow the show on Twitter at our underscore awesome. You can follow Robert at R.S. Macy. You can follow Stephen at S.E. Humphrey. And you can follow Chris at CW Culp. And thanks again to Scott Fletcher for the voiceovers. Go to voice.caroworks.com for more about Scott's great voiceover work.